And I got to know what's God and what ain't God because everything that seems good ain't God. Y'all better catch that. So turn with me to the book of Psalms. 27, starting at verse number 7. Reading from the New Living Translation, Psalms 27, verse 7. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God says, this is David, Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Mm. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. <laughs> oh, desperation. Yes, Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. Oh God of my salvation. Verse 10 says, even if my father and mother abandoned me, the Lord will hold me close. Trust. I already talked about trust. That's a trust statement right there. <laughs> well, y'all got to be able to hear God by the Spirit. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Verse 10, te 11, teach me how to live. Lifestyle, Sierra. Lifestyle. <laughs> David said, teach me how to live. Mm. My God. Oh, Lord, lead me along the right path. For my enemies are waiting for me. Don't run head on into your enemy. When you could have went the opposite direction if you could let God lead you. Mm -hmm. Don't let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. Been there. With, with, with every breath, they threaten me with violence. David is talking about his enemies. Everybody that's smiling in your face ain't your friend. Right. Yet, David says, in spite of all that, Lord, I am confident. Verse 13, I will see the Lord's goodness. He's in a desperate, desert place. But I'm confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. And then he shifts and said, wait patiently for the Lord. That's not the wait that we think. And I'm going to explain that to you. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Alpha males and alpha females. It's going to take some real faith in this hour. Not casual faith. Not casual church. Some head on collision with God and the scriptures. We establish, my God, who you are in God. By way of his word. This is the only thing that's going to remain. Build your marriage on this. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Father God, I receive my healing that my wife laid hands on me concerning. I thank you that even now, Lord, the enemy will not rob me of an opportunity to bless your people. Now, Father God, take let me allow me to bring you to them and them to you. Speak, Lord. Save somebody. Whatever you need to say, the time frame that you have allowed me to say, you say. I decrease that you may increase, Father God. Thank you for the opportunity to do business inside of your kingdom on today. Heal, deliver, and set free from any form of bondages. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I can identify with David in Psalms 27. But I thank God that I am still confident. No matter what tongues rise up against your life and rise up against you, you have to remain confident. No matter what you're facing this afternoon, because it's afternoon now, no matter what you're facing this afternoon, remain confident. Each of us have had moments where we was tested Beyond our comfort zone. Am I talking to anybody so far? Each of us, I'm going to re-say that, my God, and we dec decree that, each of us has moments where we were tested beyond our comfort zones. When working out, my God, there's always that place uh, that we call, when I'm working out, my sweet spot. Where I have done my eight reps, but I need to push for nine and ten. And so my God, my God, I'm good at getting eight, but when I push the 10, or sometimes 11 and 12, I got to push beyond my sweet spot. I'm going somewhere. 
If I want to build some strength, if I want to build some extra muscles, <laughs> I got to be willing to push beyond my comfort zone. I got to be willing to push. I stay with me now. My God, beyond, my God, my sweet spot when I'm working out in the natural. At this point, we can either press forward, past the pain, or turn back to my comfort zone and stay at eight when God has given me the capacity now to push to 10 and 11. See, God along the way enlarges enlarge your capacity. But we get set points where we keep pushing for eight when I can push for 12 now, Brandon. You understand that? My God, my God, have you settled in a comfort zone, in a sweet spot, when God has called you in this season to go farther? Like your faith. How about your obedience? We do it just enough to clear our conscience, sweet spot. But God said it's time to go farther. It's time to push deeper into freedom. It's time to push deeper into Canaan. It's time to push deeper into another level of deliverance. You don't smoke cigarettes no more, but you won't forgive. You still got to be delivered. He delivered you for one thing, but it's other stuff that we have to get delivered from. Don't settle in your comfort zone. Push deeper. Come on, somebody. David discovered there was a, David discovered there is a blessing at our breaking point. Because David in the story of the scriptures at a breaking point. God will come, my God, in at your breaking point, church, and give a revelation so you, to you even if it hurts. There is a blessing at the point of pain. Go on somewhere. There is a blessing at the point of pain. When I get to eight, I'm in pain, I promise you. Oh, my God, but when I go to nine and ten and eleven, I'm pushing past the pain. All of us got some level of pain has brought us to that breaking point, a desperation. But you got to push past your pain. You got to push past your doubts. You got to push past your lack of trust. You got to push past the things, my God, that has kept you functioning in mediocrity. You got to push. If you're going to obtain more, you got to be willing to do more. Do more in God. Mm, mm, mm. Who, my God. You can't give up now. Look at your neighbor and say, don't give up. Come on, look at him again and say, don't give up. Watch this, because God blesses us at our breaking point. What, what I like most about this song, oh my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. No matter what is going on with David, and no matter what David is going through, David continues to talk to God. Now I'm getting ready to transition into just one point. No matter what's going on with you this morning, no matter how desperate your situation is right now, please don't let your situations, don't let your mind, because the Bible says it's with the mind that you serve God. Don't let your thoughts cause you to push back, pull back, go back on God. Because right there, sometimes God got to get all of us to our breaking point. Come on, Jacob, I taught y'all that Sunday. He broke him to bless him. He broke Jacob to bless Jacob. We right there. So the title of this sermon is The Point of No Return. Some of us is at that point right now. Albright also stated, confirmation, if you don't do it, God, I'm going on. If you don't do it, I'm going the opposite direction. Some of us is right there to the point of no return. But how can I tell you this? I'm prophesying God got you right where he wants you. Right where he needs you. See, God revealed uh, to Albright another dimension of faith. Because, see, you have dimensions and levels in faith. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do what you told me. You have different levels and dimensions of faith. And so, right there, God just increased, Albright, your next level of faith. But your faith had to be mixed with desperation and obedience. Same thing with the woman with the issue of blood. My God, she had faith to be healed. Mixed with her desperation. So God got many of us positionally positioned right at our breaking point because he's going to get ready to bless you at another level. He's getting ready to reveal his glory. He's getting ready to reveal his personhood. He's getting ready to reveal his presence to you at another level. My God, so don't quit and turn back to the familiar. Are y'all with me so far? Come on, let's give God a hand. I'm just trying to lay the foundation. How many of y'all this morning, my God, can I, this afternoon can identify that in certain areas, I'm going to say certain areas because not all areas, you are at your breaking point. But how many of us is at a breaking point in some area of our life? So the Spirit of God is speaking. Now you got to receive because God has showed up to answer you and guide you and reveal to you 
some quest, I mean some principles to help you. So point number one, let's look at this. David, did David uh, desire that my prayers are answered? Do anybody desire that your prayers be answered? Okay, because, see, you see, when you're at a breaking point and when you're at a, 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 a point of no return, uh, there's some things you have to do called obedience. Yeah. <laughs> Submission. Release. These are words that you have to do, my God, so you don't allow things to hinder God from answering your prayers. Can we be honest again by the showing of hands? How many of us need to release some things? Okay. Many of us has been at this place where we needed God to work something out for us right now. We've been there. Oh, I know I needed God to show up in many times in my life, saved as well as unsaved. We know God moves, though, church, on his own time. But we need a breakthrough right now. Oh, my God. Psalm 27, 7 says, hear me, David says, as I pray. Oh, Lord, mm, be merciful and answer me. Mm. Like David, it is all right to say this. My God, this thing is hurting you. I'm going to say that right there. Be honest with yourself because you're at that point, my God. Oh, my God, well, you got to make a decision to cross over or go back. You're at that point where you really the sign of divorce or not sign <laughs> Oh, my God, you about ready to pick up the phone and return back to an abusive relationship? Or are you going on? So ask yourself, what, what's hurting you this afternoon? What's hurting you? What is vexing you? What is on top of you? What is frustrating you? Who is frustrating you? What is frustrating you? Beautiful. Think about it. Think about it. What's hurting me? What's on top of me? What has been following me and vexing me for years? What is troubling me even as I sit in the presence of the Lord? That thing that you got in your mind right now is the very thing that God is going to speak to. If it's one thing or multiple things, that's what God is after this afternoon. But you have to be willing to release. Mm. Just because you tell God and I tell God that something is hurting me or something is upsetting me or something is frustrating me don't mean that you are in doubt. And it also don't mean that God can't fix it because you say, God, this is hurting me. When are you going to do something about this? When is this going to stop? That don't mean you doubt God. you just at a point of no return right now. And as I stated, God got you right where he wants you and needs you to be in this season. Because if God don't allow you and I to face some things in life, we will continue to function beneath who we are. God's trying to, God's trying to expand the capacity even inside the ministry of the gifts and the apostolic anointing that's on going on for Christ's church. And so God got to put us in a mm, squeeze. Uh, God got to make things uncomfortable, my God. God got to do things. He got to step outside the familiar, my God, and get in the unfamiliar because he's trying to retrain you not to put him in a box. God got you right where he wants you. Come on, somebody. Oh, if you don't believe me, just ask Jonah. Mm. Jonah was in the belly of the whale. And it was at this breaking point that, he, that God stepped in. Uh, Jonah tried to do it his way, like many of us. Come on. He ran. He tried to do everything he can to, to, to not accept the call that's on his life. And how I many you know, my God, that, that, that you can't outrun God, nor can you get away from God. God will create a fist to swallow you up. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Oh, my God, but he was at his breaking point because he didn't want to adhere, my God, and submit to the calling that's on his life. Are uh, you listening to me? Me and Pastor Chef was listening to T.D. Jakes on YouTube. My God, I tend to listen to him as I settle myself, and it's a sermon called Gifted. And he said, just because you're gifted don't mean you call the pastor. Just because you're gifted can teach don't mean you call the pastor. Oh, my God, you got to make sure you got the capacity to pastor. That's why Bishop told me you can't, you can't, you cannot be in ministry and not love the people, because the people is the capacity of the pastor. Everybody gifted ain't called a pastor. Everybody preaching ain't called a pastor. You have to constantly expand. But I don't want to talk about that. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, "I'm at my point of no return." See, God know us better than we know ourselves because he had to create a belly, I mean a fish, a whale for Jonah. Let me, give you some, let me give you some revelation. That whale put Jonah in prison. Now you can't run no more. 
God gonna allow some of you, my God, to put it, be put in prison. I'm not talking about physical prison, my God, because God loved you enough where he said it's time. Now it's the time. It's your season, my God. And I got to prepare you, my God. Remember, he was working with Jacob for 20 long years. Oh, my God, he was away. Jacob, my God, when it came time for Jacob to have that face-to-face -face encounter with God, it was 20 long years that Jacob had been away from his family, but now is the time. God got you at that point right now where he's getting ready to clash with you. And you need it. He had you all right at a breaking point of no return. Either show up, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. I'm going this way. Come on. We got a whole lot of Jonah sitting in here right now. Oh, my God. So don't run because all you're going to do is make him create a whale to catch you. Oh, my God, y'all need to stay with me. Come on, somebody. God got you. All I'm trying to convey in the short time I have is, my God, God got you right where he wants you. It needs to be uncomfortable. We don't seek God when everything is good. We don't pray when everything is well. Oh, we don't fast, my God, when everything is going good. Oh, we need a little turbulence in our life. Turbulence is a good thing because it keeps you on the cusp, my God, of studying. It keeps you sensitive to God when you're going through something. We need some trial. That's why the psalm said it's good for me that I was afflicted, my God. Affliction is good to a real Christian. Jonah was at the point of no return. He tried to run. He tried to get away. God said, I, need, I have need of thee. So here come a fish, a whale. Are y'all with me so far? Let's look at Hannah since y'all don't believe me. Come on. My God. Hannah, my God, what, what was at her breaking point when she began to pray. They thought she was good. Good means drunk. Come on, somebody. Uh, they thought she was drunk, my God. But it was at that moment that God stepped in to see about Hannah. Hannah was being mocked. She was being laughed at, my God. She was vexed. She was grieved. She was at a point of no return. And she cried out to God. Some of you, my God, who God, who my God, you're so stubborn. You're at the point of no return. You're about to lose your mind and you still won't surrender. Oh, I have to push a passion with it because I want you to feel it. My God, oh my God, you got to get to the point where you're willing to allow God to break you so that he can make you. We so stubborn, my God, against God's will. We sing songs that we really don't believe. Oh, my God, we read the Constitution, but we really don't apply the Constitution. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Oh, you know what God told you to do. You know he told you to shift. He, you know he told you to let go. He know he told you to release it, but you won't do it. Why? Because we don't trust God and he got what's best for us. So God said, okay, I didn't tarry long enough. I ain't got no more grace and mercy for you. I'm finna come get it. So now it's time for me to step in and break you. Now it's time for me to step in and make a believer out of you. I'm sorry we don't jump and shout. We teach principles that are going off of Christ church. But some of us, God got us right there because we won't do what he told us to do the last time. So he said, I got to make you a believer. I make a believer out of you this time. Right. See, you have seasons and moments in God. You have divine moments and divine opportunities in God. See what I say? And God is merciful and, and he allow us to miss certain things. But then he said, I can't let you miss this season. I can't let you squander away this season. I can't let you squander away this opportunity because this is going to set you to the next level and then when you learn that he's going to go to the next level then you're going to go to the next level. See, God is very strategic about the things that he allowed to come into our life. My God, but you at a point of no return, but can I tell you again, redundantly, God got you right where he wants you. He's trying to reveal another level of his presence to you. Another level of sanctification. Another level of you, like you say, baby, revelation. God wants to reveal to you another level of revelation. He wants to take you deeper into the person of God. He wants you to really get inside of who you really are. Yeah. He wants you to begin to serve who you really are to the people and not serve the hypocrisy to the people. Not give the mass to the people. Not give to the people what you want them to think that you are, who you want them. He wants you to give to, to the people the real you. Yeah. And so in order for you to come face to face, because some of us don't even know I did at one time, didn't even know who I really was. God trying to reveal who you really are. So he got to come face to face with you. He got to have an encounter with you. He got to get you to the breaking point. He says, now I got him. Yeah. He looking at 35 years now. I got him. She didn't left him. I got him. Mm. Ah, he can't get out of jail. He can't make bond. John can't get you out now. They told you 35 years. Go do it. I got him. Yeah. Breaking point. Yeah. Can't run no more. I got to go do it, Josh. I got to go do it. Money can't get me out no more, my God. Oh, my God. Breaking point. My it was God. the best thing that could ever Come happen on to Come on, Some of you are at that point, and it's going to cause you to fall in love with God at another level. See, because some of you love him casually. You don't love him intimately. Some of you love him casually. You don't love him intimately. So he said, okay, I need some of that. 
you're sharing my glory and you're sharing my love with too many idols, so I got to break you. You worship a whole lot of stuff, but you don't worship me like you worship them. Because can I tell you something? Whatever you, whatever you love, you, are, you worship. Whatever you love, you worship. God said, I'm a jealous God. Thank you, Sister Johnson. That's right. Lord, forgive us. God said, we got divided loyalty. That's Bible. So I want you to understand that for some of us, it feels so painful. Oh, I'm trying to do it like he. <laughs> it feels so painful right now. And, and, and God, is, God has went quiet. God is silent in the storm. God ain't talking. Ain't nothing happening. Oh, my God, you're in a storm, and you don't understand. I'm in a storm, but ain't no waves. <laughs> I'm in a storm, Jackie, but ain't no noise. God has caused everything to get silent. What's going on here? God. I'm praying, but I ain't getting no revelation. I'm reading. I'm not understanding what I'm reading. I'm cloudy. I mean, God, what? God, what? God just sitting up there just smiling. He was acting good, now he done flipped out on me. She was, but now it's just chaos is going on. Ah, stuff is going on. God ain't speaking. I'm in the midst of a storm. I'm in the midst of situations, but it ain't no turbulence. Everything is steady. Everything is steady. Ain't nothing vacillating, ain't no storm, ain't nothing troubling. And God ain't nowhere around. How can everything be peaceful? How can everything be peaceful in the midst of a storm? You mean to tell me that I got peace, but I got all these storms going on around me, but ain't no movement? Oh, I'm speaking. Ain't, no, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing in the natural showing that I'm in a storm. Ain't nothing in my natural, my, my, my understanding in my psyche, my God, that makes me, I, 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 it's tight. I know I need to do it. I know this is happening. I know they said this. I know they're going to cut this off. I know they're going to repossess the car. Every, but, and God ain't saying nothing. I've been fasting for three days, killing my flesh. And God still ain't said nothing. What you think God's trying to say to you? God, my God, can I help you understand this? I say it all the time. Storms locate your faith. Storms locate your faith. And so, my God, now, this cause you in a storm don't mean it's going to be turbulent. Oh, my God. Don't you know that things can be going perfectly all right, naturally, in your life, but you are at a point of breaking? You could be at a point of no return, even though in the natural everything seems to be cool. The danger of that right there is when we appear, when things appear to be settled. When things appear to be cool, we back up on God. We stop reading. We stop praying. We stop being intentional. Come on. We stop. We lose focus. We start getting distracted. Because, and then we get confused. Oh, I'm trying to lay this. Because I know I got stuff going on. But I don't feel no turbulence in my spirit. I ain't stressed out in my mind. I know I'm at the point of no return. Ooh, uh, but why come I ain't flipping out? Uh, why come I ain't about to lose my mind? Why come I ain't went back, my God, to everything, my God, that led me to God? Why, why? Yeah. Because everything that you're experiencing right now, not everything, some things, thank you, Holy Ghost, is God sent. And he has given you the grace to handle what he sent. He don't give you the grace to handle what he didn't send. But when it comes from God, he gives you the grace to manage and handle what he said. That's why it can be chaotic all around you. You got tranquility and peace. That's why you can be going through all type of turbulence in your life. And people like, it's waiting for you to crash. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's when they get over in Zechariah 4 and 6. It's not by my might, nor by my power, but by his spirit. David prayed to the Lord. In the Psalms, David was really at the point of no return because some of his own friends rose up against him. People began to lie on him and talk about him. I'm going to stay in contact with the scripture, context with the scripture. My God, he was in a tough place, man. David had to make some decisions. Either I'm going to quit on God or I'm going on with God. 
Some of you right now is in a tough decision. Are you going on with God? Are you going to believe God and take God at his word? Or are you going back to try to make it happen in your own strength? Some of you are right there right now. Can I tell you, don't quit. Don't go back. As I teach the body, what you going to go back to? The very thing that you think going to help you ain't going to hurt you. It's going to imprison you. You're already struggling. You're going to go back and struggle even more. Keep pushing. Let God build your faith. Let God build your trust. God is trying to train a lot of us to hear and follow him from a different way. We're used to God being in the storm. How about in the quietness? Can you still trust him? How about when everything is still? Can you still trust him? He ain't going to always tell you and I everything. He give it to you in stages as you can handle it. Everybody can't handle revelation. You got to give it to them when they can handle it. You got to increase your capacity to handle revelation from heaven. Are y'all with me so far? I'm taking y'all on a journey because I want y'all to get it. It don't have to always be this. You don't have to have a lot of noise to be at a point of no return. Some of us is at a point of no return. We don't want nobody to know. So we smile. How you doing, man of God? How you doing, woman of God? But we about to kill ourselves and lose our mind. That's the point, my God, where you got to say, okay, God, I need to do what David said. I need to talk to God. Well, I've been talking to God. He ain't answering, just like you said, Pastor. Well, then you got to continue to pray. Because God said, either you going to believe me or you ain't going to believe me. Either you going to trust me or you ain't going to trust me. God will get quiet, y'all, because he's building your trust. He's anchoring your faith. He's showing you him at another level. You got to be able to follow God as I teach y'all when you can't trace God. You got to do what he told you to do when, when he got quiet on you. If he told you to go left, you keep going left until he say something different. When you get ready to walk off the cliff, he going to speak. See, that's, that's radical faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, God ain't going to tell you everything. Oh, my God. But all of us get to a point of no return. Let me ask you this question. We have come to a point of breaking. Have you squandered off your opportunity to experience God at another level? Have things got like this? And when it got chaotic external in the natural, instead of you getting spiritual, you got fleshly and you miss an opportunity to expand. See, we squander off opportunity for God to reveal himself to us, to us at another level. Because as long as it's peaceful, my God. But when it get like this, we get fleshly. When the storms is rising, we can see the wind. We can see the storm. We can see the hurricane. We can see the trial. We see it. We see it. We see it. My God. Instead of responding, my God, in a godly way, we act up. And we miss opportunities. Watch me now to expand. We miss opportunity for God to reveal his person to us at another level. All I'm trying to get us to understand in this first point, my God, is that no matter where you face, what you're facing, no matter where you're at right now, my God, even at the point of no return, God is, getting, God is trying to break you so he can make you. Make you, meaning that make you have you to experience him at another level. To increase your love for him. Because the Bible says those who have been forgiven much, they love much. Some of us, they're, they're self-righteous. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When you see somebody really going in, you tell yourself, what they doing all that for? Why she doing that? Why pastor up there screaming and hollering? Because sometimes you have moments in God where he will remind you of what he brought you out of, what he done for you. And it'll hit a vein. It'll hit a, mm, it'll hit something in your spirit. Ah, you just, ah. Come on. You, you begin to show different levels of expression when you remember what God has done for you. When you remember how far he bought you. Oh, my God. It, uh, uh, God gets some of us to a breaking point because, see, we, we, we ain't thankful enough. Oh, my God. You ain't, some of us ain't, all right, bitch, you said all that. Some of you ain't been through enough yet. Some of y'all say, religious folks say the devil is a lie. You don't know my story. If, it, what, what, if you've been through a lot, then why come it ain't change your actions? Why come it ain't increase your love? Why come it ain't increase your hunger? And so instead of you moving forward, you went backwards. Since you've been through so much, since the devil is a lie, why come you ain't going harder? Why come you ain't loving harder? Why come you ain't forgiving much, uh, uh, more? You know, come on, come on. Since you've been through stuff. We living in an hour where there's a lot of compromise. I'm telling the woman of God, 
We got to get healthy. We got to be honest with ourselves. We're at that point right now in many areas of our life where we need God to move. But don't misunderstand what God has tried to do. Because some of us is at a breaking point because of our own choices and own decisions. But then you have that what God allowed you to get to. That he's trying to orchestrate and maneuver in your life for the purpose of your purpose and your calling in life. Come on, somebody. See, see, God is the master planner, the master orchestrator. And there's things that's going on that you and I don't understand. That's why I said, my God, it could be like this, but you know something is happening. You know, but it's peaceful in your spirit because God is orchestrating. He's setting you up, my God, to do what he want to do in your life. This is why we have to be able to trust God. Do y'all understand the amount of trust and faith that it took to launch out from 3434? Very uncomfortable. A lot of sleepless nights. <sighs> to go from sharing a space with Pastor Jeff Tim, no financial responsibility, no bills, no nothing. Uh, But here's the thing. This is good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For five years, we co-labored together with Pastor Jeff Voth at 3434. But I got to my breaking point. Well, I told God, I said, I can't go into 2019 like I did in 2018. Yeah. I got to have something different. I need a new level of excitement. I need something different. I feel like the church had stalled out. It was always, my God, stuck at a one o'clock service and people would come. We had a lot of traffic, but one o'clock just don't work good. Like, I need something different. I need some excitement. God, send me some young minds. Send me something different. God, re re recharge me. Refocus me. Give me a fresh fire. Oh, my God, my God. On a 21-day fast, my God, didn't if God begin to speak. Because God, I know I would have died. And I probably would have left everything and everybody because I couldn't take no more. I was at a breaking point. Y'all just don't know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, God spoke, my God. Thank you. He heard my cry. Somebody give God a hand in the church, man. I was at that breaking point. I said, I can't take no more. You heard me tell you that, Chef. I can't take no more. I had to give you a little pack. I want you to feel. Some of y'all are screaming inside, just like I just screamed external. You're screaming. Matter of fact, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, David says sometimes you got to look like a fool for God. If you had a breaking point, stand up and scream. Come on, come on, come on. I don't know about y'all, but that feel good. Hey! Oh, Jesus. It's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. One more time. Hey! I promise you, I didn't do that to entertain you. I did that to release. I said, I did it to release. I'm preaching to my own self this morning. I can't get no mind. God. Hey! My God, even though the church is blessed, even though checks are showing up, I'm still at a breaking point in every area of my life. Hey! Oh, Jesus. I got to get it up off of me. I got to get it up off of me. You got to get it up off for you. Sometime in the dorm at night, Vontaze, God wake you up. Just scream, shake the whole door. Shake the whole door. Let your worship shake the door. My God. My God, go ahead and get seated. Let me finish point number one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so much better already. I said I feel so much better already. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We just make room for you to look like a fool so you can get free at this church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Hannah was at her breaking point. Like I said, they thought she was drunk with wine. But God came to see about her. Can I tell you, my God, God is going to come see about you because you're at your breaking point. See, God can't deal with you because, you see, we got too much self. We got to put our flesh on the altar. And then we got to kill our desires and our passion like Minister Robert told us, my God. Oh, my God, you got to get to a breaking point, my God. Then you surrender. Then you submit. God trying to break some of you because you ain't submitted and you ain't surrendered. You follow God according to your will. You don't follow him according to his will. You dictate. You try to. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's the Lord's will that prevail. See, many of us, my God, is trying to dictate to God what we will do and what we won't do. When we going to do, when we going to do. When we ain't going to do, what we ain't going to do. That's a dangerous place to be in. God said you ain't broken enough. That's what's wrong with Jacob. Jacob, when he was wrestling with the angels, my God, he was wrestling in his flesh. But over a period of time, all night struggle, he went from standing up in pride to holding on. God broke him to where now I'm no longer fighting, I'm holding on. <laughs> oh, some of y'all, God gonna break it till you hold on. <laughs> oh, you fighting God right now. Oh my God, you resisting everything you're trying to do. God said, you ain't broken yet, I'm gonna keep the pressure on you. I'm gonna keep my hands on you. Come on, somebody, until you let go of fighting to holding. Jacob said, I ain't gonna let you go till you bless me. Some of y'all gotta get to the point where you ain't fighting no more when you hold it on because you're blessed now. He changed his character because where he was taking him. Oh my God, it went down into the Egypt with 70 and came out meetings. Oh my God, are you fighting God? If you're still fighting, God gonna get you to the point of breaking. Just like I told y'all, every time God tried to put his hands on you, come here champ, come on. I got to show this because some of y'all didn't see it. God tried to put his hands on some of you to mold you, powder and clay. But every time you try to put your hands on me, come on, I'm slapping you. Some of y'all like this with God, like I told y'all. Y'all need to revisit that. Because even though you've seen the revelation of it, every time God trying to put his hands on you because he's a potter and we are the clay, she was trying to say, you slapping his hands down. But you're steady praying and asking God to do something for you and he's trying to put his hands on you. He's trying to mold you. He's trying to break you so he can take you somewhere. He's trying to execute your calling. He's trying to reveal your purpose for you. But you're fighting God. When you stop fighting, God says, now you're ready. When you stop fighting, most of us might not be fighting physically. We're fighting in our mind. It's with the mind that you and I serve God. Yes, Lord. David prayed. Hannah was at the point of no return. Jonah was at the point of no return. And many of us are Hannah's and many of us are Jonah's. Don't miss the lesson, men. Don't miss the lesson, women. The point of no return. You will find out that some of your most powerful prayers will come at your breaking point. That's why when you're at your breaking point, a place of no return, you should push forward. You should go deeper. My God, you should say, God, some of you need to be praying Matthew 5 and 6, blessed is the man who hunger and thirst. You need to ask God to increase your hunger for him. Hunger for the things of God. Not hunger for your gift, but hunger for him. Hunger to know him. Hunger to fall in love with him. More to be more ah, intimate with him. Not with things. Quit seeking the face of hand of God and seek the face of God. Increase. Break. To all of my married folks in this church, including your pastors, what worked five years ago in your marriage when you first married it don't work the next five. As I told y'all how I handled my wife at 30, I can't handle her at 50. 
Why did the Spirit of God make me back up? Because I know and you know what we are dealing with. Not talking about me and I'm talking about we as husband and wives. God is trying to break us and many of us is at, a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at that place right now to a week for getting ready to make some decisions. You better make sure that it's God though. And then you got to do like, thank you, Holy Ghost. Then you got to do like, my God, uh, like the Spirit of God is getting ready to say, you got to begin to search out your motives for why you're doing and thinking and behaving the way you are. Because God just informed you and revealed to many of us, and those that's not married, pay attention and foul this because you're going to need it one day. For those that's us, my God, is married, my God, my God, God got you and your husband, you and your significant other, wife, whoever, at a point right where he wants you. To break. Not to hurt, break to make. God is trying to break us so he teaches how to love at a different level. How to forgive at a different level. How to parent at a different level. How to model, my God, true prophet, priest, and king at a different level. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Make sure you don't let your flesh, oh my God, because of a temporary situation, make you make a permanent decision. Because it's painful. God spent 20 years waiting on Jacob, my God. And we can't wait two minutes, my God. We ready to quit, my God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. Quit tapping out and quitting on your significant other. You knew what they was like when you married them. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So you would take what the Spirit of God just said and say, okay, God, teach me. Train me. Don't let me do something I'm going to regret. Five months later. That's just biblical instruction of a shepherd trying to protect the sheep. What you do with it, that's on you. But as the Spirit of God has been orchestrated, I mean, or, or speaking in the atmosphere, my God, some of the things we're going through is God <clears throat> trying to break us so he can make us. Don't give up too soon. You'll reap if you faint not. All the prayers and things that you've been believing for for your significant other. If you faint not, you'll reap. You will start seeing some things change. We were just talking about this. We're starting to see some things change for the good. Yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. She look happy. And she ain't fronting. Because I'm willing to make the changes. As I told y'all, what worked at 30 don't work at 50. Pastor, it's real like that because I don't want to see my sons and daughters go through something. That's right. That's if right. they'd have stayed the course and learned the lessons, yeah. they would have benefited from. Yeah, it is love. It's pastoring. Somebody give God a hand. It is at this breaking point your prayers become sincere. Even Jesus in the garden, thank you, Holy Ghost, coming in with this one. Even Jesus in the garden was at his breaking point. Even God. Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass for me. But if I don't go to the cross, Juju and Tiki ain't going to make it. If I don't go to the cross, Champ and Sharon ain't going to make it. If I don't crawl to the cross, mahogany going to give up. If I don't crawl to the cross, Mr. Jack, internet ain't going to never come in. If I don't crawl to the cross, my son will die an alcoholic. If I don't crawl to the cross, my son, I'm talking about Jesus saying this about us, will die a drug addict. My flesh don't want to die for them because they're going to lie on me and talk about me. They're not going to love me. The way I love them. They're not going to give themselves away from me, God is saying. Lord, I don't want to. Lord, I don't want to. Lord, please. I don't want to go through this for these people. They're going to turn their back on me. 
These people ain't going to love me like they say they do. They worship me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. God, I don't want to go. God, whatever you do, don't make me go. God, please, I don't want to go. Send Champ. Send Michelle. Send Sharon. Send Alvin. Send Kim. Send anybody but me, Lord. I don't want to go. They ain't going to love me. They ain't going to treat me right. Christian them ain't going to love me. Amber them ain't going to love me. Oh, my God, they get married in my name. Oh, my God, but they get in there, turn around and divorce, my God, because they go through something. My God, they not going to do it. God, I don't want to go. Mm. At his breaking point, sweating great drops of blood. Hey, my God, but then his spirit rose up. And he said, nevertheless. <laughs> oh, my God, he got up out of the flesh and he tapped into the spirit. I said, he got up out of his flesh and he tapped, my God, into his spirit. And the Bible says he went a little farther. And the Bible said that Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. See, some of y'all got to get a nevertheless down in your soul. If I got to crawl, I refuse to quit. I'm at a breaking point, but I won't go back. I'm going to crawl. I'm going to crawl to my breakthrough. I'm going to stand for my breakthrough. I'm going to pray for my breakthrough. Ain't no shadow of tongue. Ain't no quit. But I'm going on. I'm going on. See what it is of a saved life of God. I don't want to. I don't want to. But nevertheless, nevertheless, ain't no shadow of turning. I'm at my breaking point. Lord, don't let me get in the flesh, but let me get in the spirit. Jesus, I'm coming in, y'all. Jesus, the one we worship, our Lord and our Savior, was at a point in his flesh, God, where he didn't want to. But he said, I got to go a little farther. Lest our body going to get to get a testimony. If I don't go a little further, I can't reveal Revelation to Vontaze to give to his young mentee so he can get a breakthrough. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, you got to understand the price that Jesus paid. Oh, my God, for you and I, how can you not be found faithful? How can you not release? How can you not let it go? Oh, my God, nevertheless, I'm going to close it right there. Nevertheless, the point of no return. Oh, my God. The point of no return. <laughs> oh, you at your breaking point. <laughs> you don't know how much more you can take, baby. <laughs> oh, you about to throw in the towel. <laughs> oh, you about to blow your brains out. I'm talking to somebody. You about to return back to that abusive relationship. Uh, oh, my God. You about to go back and do some stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. That you know you shouldn't do, my God. You got to come and release. <laughs> you got to come and let it go, my God. Oh, my God. You're at the point of no return. Will you be honest with yourself? You're ready to quit, my God. Will you come, my God? Because you know you're ready to quit. You know you're at the point of no return. You don't know which way to go. Oh, my God. But so God says, come to me. Oh, my God. David prayed unto the Lord because he was at a point of no return. His enemy has rose up against him. His enemies began to lie on him. And God wasn't speaking. Oh, my God. But he came to the Lord. Oh, my God. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come today? Oh, come to the Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah. Oh, Lord, help your people. Help your people. Who she can out of the motion now? Oh, my she can out of the motion. She can out of the Yeah. Some of you, my God, need to crawl to the altar. <laughs> hey, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I met my point. I met my wits in. Even to some of my students. You in school. School just started. But you know what you go through in your mind. You know the thoughts you have, my God, when ain't nobody around. Oh, you know the fears and the worries, the stuff that you have. Oh, you know you believe in God for things. You ought to be at this altar believing God. Oh, my God, for your breakthrough. Come on and spend some time with God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.